Okay. Now, on Chav Zayin and Aleph, the Gemara is going to try to sort of adjudicate what what the story with Ula is, and we'll try a couple of times, and eventually we'll, we won't be able to prove Ula wrong. But Rav Yechanan will end the discussion by saying definitively that Ula is incorrect, and it's not true. You can put a tree right up to the property line. We'll see why. So Toshma, Akleina Ula Mikarkoi, maybe Mikarkoi. Okay. If somebody purchases a tree and he specifies, not only am I buying your tree, but I'm also buying the land underneath it. So then the rule is you bring Bikurim. You own the tree and you own the property, you bring Bikurim. My love, presumably that means Kolshu. How much property did you buy together with the tree? Just the spot underneath the tree itself. You didn't buy the full 16 ounce. And yet you still bring Bikurim. Okay. So clearly that contradicts Ula. So the says, Lo yud vavama. It's 16 amas. It's you, you bought not only the tree, but you bought the 16 amas around the tree. If you didn't, then the truth of the matter is, then you would be a thief and and you would not bring the Quran. Okay. Toshma, Kona Shnei Ilonis Pesosh Chavere, maybe Vinikar, or Shlesh, maybe Kar, maybe Vikar. Okay. The first scenario we said the guy bought the field and he specified that he wanted to buy the prop, he bought the, the, the tree. And he specified he wanted to buy the property that was underneath the tree. Let's say he didn't specify he wants to buy the property. He just he just specified the tree. So the law is as follows. If you buy two trees, you only get the trees, not the property underneath. But if you buy three trees, you also get the property underneath. So therefore, if you buy two trees, then you, you, you do, you do not, and you don't specify that you want to buy the property, you do not bring the you do not bring Bikurim because you only own the tree, not the property. Whereas if you buy three trees, you you get to you get to uh, you get to bring Bikurim because presumably you bought the property. Well, how much property you bought? My love calls you. You bought just the property that's underneath the trees, and yet you're still nourishing your your trees are still nourishing from outside of the property that you own, and you still bring Bikurim. Sigmar says no. Sixteen amas is what you get. Toshma Rabbi says Karka Kolshul. If a guy owns a tiny drop of property, yeah, what is it sufficient for? Chayev the payah, you have to take off payah. Payah is a corner of the field that's given to the poor. So even if a guy owns a minuscule portion of property, he takes off a portion, a corner of that minuscule portion. Okay, ube bikurim, you have to bring bikurim. Now remember, you don't own 16 amas here. You own a tiny piece of property and you still bring bikurim. This seems to contradict the opinion of Ula. Okay, the Kaisen of Prisbal, you know, the principle is a document that allows you to collect your debt after Shemitah. The only way principle works is if the lender, if the borrower has, has property. But even a minuscule portion of property is sufficient to write a principle. Without going into, going into too much detail, there's a Kenyan called Agav, which means if I acquire property, I can acquire movable items with the property, wherever those movable items are. And you don't have to acquire a large piece of property. Even if you acquire a, a minuscule property, you get to acquire all the uh, all the additional items that are included through acquiring the property itself. So the idea is that their father wanted to give them the, the, these uh, famous uh, uh, text in the in, in uh, prophets. I don't remember the next word. Im bihuda. Basically, their father wanted to give them a lot of wine. The wine wasn't local, it was far away. So their, what their father did is he gave them property in Yehuda, in Judea, and with that property was included all the wine wherever it was. So you don't have to actually pick up all the wine. By picking up by, by acquiring your property, you get to keep all the wine. Now, very clearly here it states that if you have a tree, if you have a property that's minuscule, you still bring Bikurim. Presumably. You have you have a tree, let's say like a vine, even though even though the roots grow sixteen amis, you still bring bikurim because you're not a thief because you're allowed to put your vine right up at the property line. So Gemara says no. Uh, what are we talking? About? What are we talking about? Bechiti. We're talking about where he planted wheat. Wheat, the roots don't grow far. And wheat also has the obligation to bring Bikurim. Bikurim is brought from the seven fruits that the land of Israel was blessed with. 
and, and even though fruit here would be not 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 quite literally, because uh, wheat is not a fruit, but uh, you bring wheat for bikur. They can. I mean, the tiny culture. The property is is culture means culture means as minuscule as possible. What could you plant on a minuscule property? Presumably, you could plant one piece, one grain of wheat. Toshma, Elon, you have a tree. Mitzasev aretz, mitzasev chutz laaretz. Some of it is in Israel. Some of it is outside of Israel. Okay, so now the stuff that's in Israel, we know is obligated in Trumas and Maestras. If you take off the tithes. If it's outside of Israel, you don't need to take it off. So now this tree is, is on the border. But what do you do with the fruit of the tree? Okay. So the first opinion is, Teva v'chulam et rovin Rebbe. Rebbe says, you have a mixture of that which is obligated in Truma and that which is not obligated in Truma. And you don't know what to do. You don't know which fruits are obligated in Truma, which fruits are not obligated in Truma. Rav Shimon Gamliel, I remember Shimon Gamliel says, no, 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 it's very simple. Hagadol b'chiyev, that which grows in Israel, chayev, you have to take off Truma some Isris. Hagadol b'ptur, that which grows outside of Israel, potter, you're exempt. At Kamalei Pligi, this is only true, Eldem Marasover Yesh Brera, Marasover Ein Brera. Okay, what do we get? Brera again, what's Brera? Brera is Hoover Hadover Lamafreya. We can determine, we can definitively determine retroactively. So we'll explain. According to Ergum Leo, we determine that all the nutrition that comes from the land of Israel ends up on the Israel side. And all the nutrition that, that, that's from outside of Israel ends up on the non-Israel side. So you draw a line through the tree. The stuff on that side of the tree is, does not need, does not require Truman Semaisers, and the stuff on this side of the tree does. And Rebbe, and Rebbe says, no, it's not very right. It's all mixed together. It's one mixture. Okay, give our call Potter. Then it's just one problem. According to Ula, the, the, even the Israel tree is nourishing from outside of Israel. And even the non-Israel side is nourishing from Israel because the tree nourishes 16 Amis. So if that's the case. Everyone should agree that it's a mixture of Truma and non-Truma, Tevel, whatever. That which requires Trumas and Meisers and that which does not require Trumas and Meisers. Sigmar says, no, no, no. What happens here is, is that there is a, a stone retaining wall in between and the tree straddles the wall. So actually in this case, we can, we can say definitively that the Israel side of the tree only nourishes from Israel and the non-Israel side of the tree only nourishes from outside of Israel. So Gemara says, one second, if that's the case, you have my time at the Rebbe. What is, what's Rebbe's opinion that, that, that it's all mixed up, it's all one mixture? So Gemara says, Rebbe says, the, Haj, the Hajri Arafi. According to Rebbe, since they share a common trunk, so then they, the nutrition is mixed together. So Gemara says, what's the debate here? One opinion is that the trunk sort of mixes it all together, and the other opinion says, no. Because it's it's straddling a retaining wall, so half of it is is Israel and half of it is not Israel. Gemara so says Gemara now asks the obvious question: We we had a debate between Rabbi Yossi and the rabbis about keeping a tree twenty five amis from the swimming pool. One second, what is it? Is it twenty five amis or is it sixteen amis? Twenty-five hamas. So where did the number sixteen get come from? So Amar Abaya Abay explains Mazel Tuva Asli. The truth of the matter is the roots travel twenty-five hamas. However, he explained before the nutrition is only sixteen hamas, and similarly the damage that occurs to the property is only sixteen hamas. In sixteen hamas, it's stealing it's stealing the nutrition. So you consider a thief. <clears throat> But Fele Makhashi doesn't steal more than 16 Amas. He also of Dimi, Amar, when Rav Dimi came, he said, Boy me Rishlogash me Rabbi Echran. Rishlogash the following question to Rabbi Echran. Ilan Asamach Lametzer, but Tech Yud Vavama. Mahu. If you have a tree that's within 16 Amas to the property line, what's the story? So Amar Leis, Rabbi Echran, according to this version, Rishlokish asks Rabbi Echen, and Rabbi Echen responds exactly what Ula says. Gazlanu, you're a thief. The aim of Yimimana Bikurim, you do not bring Bikurim. 
Mikur. However, a later student came along. He also, Ravin, Ravin was also a student of Rabbi Yechanan. And guess what he thought? He had a different version of what Rabbi Yechanan, what, what, uh, Rabbi Yechanan says. He also, Ravin on Rabbi Yechanan, when he said it, when he quoted the name of Rabbi Yechanan, he says as follows, Echad ilan asamach lemeitzah, echad ilan hanaita, both a tree that's that's at the property line, or not only a tree that's at the property line, a tree that's literally hanging over his friend's property. Maybe the kaire, you bring bikur. Why shall menas kain hinchal yehoshua the Yisrael asaretz? This was a condition that Joshua made with the Jewish people when they enter the land. Yeshua said to them, "You have to live with each other." You imagine, terrible. And you got to keep. And that means that some of your trees are going to be within 16 amis of your friend's tree. Not only is it going to be next to it, it might even hang over your friend's property. And tough luck, you have to live with it, and you have to forgive it. It is forgiven, and therefore you can bring Bikurim and you actually own it, and there's nothing wrong. So that ends the discussion of Ula, and the final opinion is that this is all irrelevant. You can put your tree right up at the property line as long as you don't damage the guy's swimming pool or whatever. Exactly. If, if he has a, a subterranean structure. Okay. Speaking of, you have a tree that's hanging over his friend's property. The limbs are, are hanging over. So the guy wants the guy can't move, right? The limbs are blocking his, you know, they're blocking his pathway. What can he do? So it's Malayam or Dea Al Gabi Machresha. So what he can do is he can cut the height of the of a of a plow. Meaning such that he can work his field without without his plow uh, uh, without banging into the other guy's limbs. If it's a carob or a sycamore. So then, what's a mishkailas? It's an English word for this. It's a weight. You see this in the builders when they build masonry and, and uh, concrete and brick. They hang these weights to make sure that the, the wall is perfectly vertically aligned. A plumb line. A plumb line. Thank you. A plumb line. So he says, the of shikma, it's a plumb line, meaning go up in the tree, hang the plumb line. And that's where you can cut the tree, literally right up at the property line. You have no right to extend over the property line. Base hashlochen, you have a field. A base hashlochen is a field that has a spring on a, a spring or a cistern on site, so it's constantly watered, and therefore it yields it yields a uh, um, uh, uh, produce an entire year, entire summer. It's a very long season. Then every tree you can trim. Why? Because if you put shade over, over the, the, the property, you prevent the guy from growing. And it, if it was just one, once a year harvest, it wouldn't be as, as detrimental. But because it's a constant harvest, therefore we say no trees at all. You trim it at the property line. Abishol says, any non-fruit bearing tree, it's connected to Mishkailos. It's along a plumb line. Okay. Was that? My neighbor has some trees coming over, and I do a lot of things. Uh, okay, yeah, we 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 do something similar. Ibaylehu Abishol Areshikoy Ayasevikoy Abishol says all uh, non fruit bearing trees. Is that going on the first half of the Mishnah? First half of the Mishnah says only a sycamore and a and a and a carob, and Abishol says no, no, no. It's any non-fruit bearing tree in addition to a carob. You couldn't do that with a sycamore. So in the first version of the Mishnah, if you have if you're planting wheat, which is a yearly harvest, then you, you, know, you can't. You can only cut the height of a plow. But Abishal would say, no, 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 even if it's not a fruit, according to the rabbis, any tree, as long as it's not a sycamore or a carob, you can't trim higher, higher than a plow. Than what it takes to plow the fields. And Abishal says, no, 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 any non fruit bearing tree. That's one version. Or do we say, Abishal, or is going in the second half? The, the Mishnah says that if it's a base hashlochen, it's a field that's constantly watered, you could trim out, you could trim out the plumb line. And Abishal says, no, 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 not every tree, only 
a non-fruit bearing tree. So which is it? Toshma, we learned, Tanya, we learned, Beit Sashloch and Abishola, Kola Elon. When it comes to a to a, a a property that's watered, an irrigated property, Abishol says Kola Elon, any type of tree. Tanya Mishkarlis is at a plumb line. Clearly, he agrees when they shot sale around the base of because shade is particularly detrimental to the yield of a of a property that's constantly watered. Okay, clearly, uh, clearly he agrees to the rabbis by a field that's constantly watered. So it means that when he says, when he refers to a tree that is non-fruit bearing, you cut it out of plumb line, he's going in the beginning of the Mishnah. Any non-fruit bearing tree, and under any circumstances, could always be trimmed at the plumb line. Shmami, no, it's good proof. Um, Ravashi, Ravashi says, Masisinami Deka, the mission also pr can prove, prove itself. Itani, because the mission says, Kol Ilan Tzarek. Any non-fruit-bearing non tree. If it's referring to the, the first half of the Mishnah, therefore it makes sense to say every tree. He doesn't have to say every tree. Why? Because the rabbis already use the word every tree. The rabbis, if, the rabbis say, when it comes to a irrigated field, every tree, trim it at the plumb line. And Abishal says, every non-fruit-bearing tree. He didn't have to say every. Kol. It doesn't have to include everything. It's obvious everything is included. All you need to say is, no, no, no. Limited. Limited. Because you already have the everything rule. So he puts the limitation. He says, no, no, no. It's only non-fruit bearing trees. Why did he say everything? Clearly he's going on the first half of the mission. Allah Shamina, Reish Kosh no, it's good proof. Okay. Second mission on 27B. Elon Shehunoite Loshusarab. A tree that's leaning onto the public property. Kaitzitz, okay. So now you're you're being a, a nuisance to the public. So how much do you have to trim? Kaitzitz kadeshi a gomel over v'roichle. A camel with its rider could be able to pass. That's the height. Rabbi Huda Emer Rabbi Huda says gomel ton pishton a chavili's maris. A camel that's loaded with flax or with branches. Rav Shimon, I'm Rav Shimon says, "Call Elon Kenai and Amishkayos from that tumul." Rav Shimon, Rav Shimon says, because of tumul, we'll talk about talk about that more in a moment. You trim it using a plumb line at at the property line. Says the Gemara, "Montana de Menizok and Basar Um de No Dahash Das Lina." So now this is a very interesting thing. You're trimming the you're trimming the trees to the height of a rider, a, a camel rider. Now, what's going to happen in five years? It's going to grow back. So why don't we make you do a much more permanent fix than sort of a very temporary fix? Clearly, this is because when we're protecting the public property, we only protect it for what its needs are at the time. We don't look in the future and say, oh, in 10 years from now, it's going to overgrow, so chop it all down. <laughs> So Montana de Minizak and Basar Umda the Hashlas Lina. We go we go based on right now. Omer Shlokish to Shlokish says, Machlaik is Shinuya. It's actually a debate. Verbal Yazar, it's the opinion of Rebel Yazar, the Tanan we learned. Ain Aisen Khalal Takas Rushusarabim. Um sorry. No, okay. Okay. It's the opinion of Rebel Yazar. Because we learned. You can't dig a you can't dig underneath public property. Burris, if uh, uh, these are our pits yes, for storage, Sichen, these are cisterns for water, Maoris are caves potentially to live in. And what why can't you dig under the underneath the public street? Because one day over time it'll get weakened, your structure, and eventually it will it will it will fall in and you're ruining the public roads. Rebelezu says, as long as the Mack truck can drive over heavily, fully loaded, 80,000 pounds, right? The full the full uh, legal limit. And what was the Mack truck of those days? It was the, the wagon that was loaded with stones. So stone-laden wagon. That was like the heaviest thing on the road. Mm -hmm. If that thing can get over your, uh, your whatever subterranean structure you built, no problem, you can build it. Okay. 
Now, again, what do we see here? We see that Rabbi Yezer is concerned only in the moment. He's concerned right now, can, can the truck drive over it? He doesn't care about what's going to happen in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So this seems to be aligned with the opinion of Rabbi Yezer. Rabbi Yechon Yechon says, I feel the same. Rabbi Yechon says, it's not a fair comparison because it could be the rabbis disagree there by a pit because a pit, you know, the natural state of affairs is that that it sort of will cave in with time. But over here, you're always able to trim the tree slightly. There's nothing, you know, you, you'll never, it will never result necessarily in damage. You can always trim it. And therefore, it could be that the, our mission is even according to the rabbi's opinion. Rabbi Huda, I remember Huda says, Instead of a, a camel with its rider, it's a camel that's loaded. So what's the question here? Which one is taller? Is which one is, is higher above the ground? A rider of a camel or a loaded camel? See by Lahu, she ordered Rabbi Huda Nafish, I don't shoot Rabbana Nafish. Do we say Rabbi Huda's number is higher, or is it the rabbi's number that's higher? Sigmar says, she did the shiur of Rabbana Nafish. It's obvious that the rabbis give a higher number. The Isaac died that she ordered Rabbi Huda Nafish, she ordered Rabbana Mashur Rabbi Huda Hechi of it. It must be the rabbi's number is higher. Why? Because clearly we have both things going down a public street. We have camels with riders and camels that are loaded. So if Rabbi Huda's number is higher, why wouldn't the rabbis agree to Rabbi Huda? And you're thinking to yourself, yeah, okay, fine. So Elamai, Shudah Rabbanonov, okay, so the rabbi's number is higher. But then Rabbi Huda, Shudah Rabbanonai of it. Well, it doesn't answer the question because what does Rabbi Huda do with a camel that's a camel and a rider? That's also common. So why would Rabbi Huda say you don't have to trim as high? The Gemara says, after the Gachen Bechalaf to say. The Gemara says a rider of a camel, he can just bend down. So, so, you know, there was a couple of summers where I had access to a bunch of horses to, to, to ride, and you'd go on the trails, and sometimes you'd have to duck. You know? Okay, Shimon, I'm Shimon, says, call even Canadian. Because of Tomo. What type of Tomo here? Sigmar says, Tana, midne oil ha Tomo. Because of oil. What does oil mean? So, oil literally means a tent, but it doesn't, but over here, you're talking about oil hames. Oil hames doesn't necessarily mean a tent. If you stick your hand over a grave site, then your hand now is a tent. And anything that's underneath your hand is becomes tummy. So it doesn't necessarily literally mean a tent. It probably doesn't mean it. It's just a conceptual framework. So similarly, if you have a dead body underneath a tree, now everybody in the public in the public road is becomes tummy. Sigmara says, um, obviously the type of tumma presumably here is Thomas oil. Sigmar says, no, not necessarily. It does, I wouldn't necessarily think it's talking about oil tumma. It could be talking about a different type of tumma. What's the tumma? Ravens, obviously these are uh, carcass-eating animals. Mm -hmm. They took small portions of the dead body, sm small enough that they do not actually make oil tumma, and they dump it on the tree, and it stays there for a long time. But the solution here would be just thin out the branches. You don't have to chop. You don't actually have to chop down the whole tree, and therefore the tumma would fall down, so people would see it. The mashlan that no, the tumma here is not the ravens carrying tumma or carrying, let's say, the rodents. It's tumma of oil of a dead body, because it spreads much further. And the only way to, to stop it from spreading is to chop down all the 